Chris Chris Porzingis to the Celtics, man. Oh, All yeah. of a sudden, the Celtics are not a favorite to go back to the finals for a third season. And if yeah. they don't make it to the finals, we going to cook them. But I know you're excited about this one, E. This, yeah, this is one that, you know, what you think bro, about I, this? I, I mess with KP, bro. The guy, he he's not a he's not a one-option guy. I think he can be a two. But for, for him to be on a championship team, he would definitely have to be a third or below. And guess what? He's in a system where he's the third option or below. This is this is real dangerous. This is really dangerous. The Celtics are, and I can see why they got the odds. When I was looking at it the other day, I think yesterday, I was a little bit salty. Nuggets did just win a championship. But I looked at it like, Christoph Porzingis is on the Celtics. You put Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown with Kristaps still having one of the best rim protectors in the league, still having the, the best six man in the league currently. There's a lot of things, man. A lot of things the Celtics are de- like they're dealing with right now. And it would be really hard. Like if they don't win this championship, I would be really disappointed. I would think like scratch blaming Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, or even Joe Missoula, bro. I, I would I would blame the organization. Like they they just bad luck. Like they won one championship in the, in the like since Larry Bird. They won one championship and haven't really had anything going for themselves. So I I, I would just think Boston is bad luck in general after that. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to step foot in Boston after that one. If they lose this championship, they they're really they're stacked, bro. They are stacked. And we're going to get to another conversation because this conversation you like to have about teams. We're going to get to that after this segment. But uh, uh, here's, here's my thing with the uh, with the Chris Dallas-Pazingas thing. I think, um, like, look, he had his best season last year with the Wizards. Um, I, I just want to touch on Mark Smart first. Oh, pause. I think he gave his heart to that organization. You want to make your face up or whatever. No, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, he did, he did. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, you know, I don't think much of him as a defender. I think he's the most overrated uh, defensive player of the year. I think that shouldn't have went to him. Yeah, like he's good on defense, but yeah, yeah. You know, but that's neither here nor there. I think he was done wrong, in my opinion. I, I really, I don't want to say he was done wrong, but I just feel like, I don't know. It's a lot of players being done wrong in the Celtics. Jalen Brown being unappreciated. Michael yeah. Brown, he was in, and he was in trade. Uh, Jalen Brown was in um, trade rumors and all of this stuff. You know, no real transparency. Not really. They talk about him as bad. A lot of them know what's going on. Malcolm Brogdon was putting the original trade for Chris Osmond's niggas. I know he's feeling away about that. And it's a business at the end of the day. I get that. But you, you at first you tra- you want to trade him. And then you, whatever happens, now you don't want to trade him. You trade market smart. It's just a lot of funny business going on with the Celtics. We see they did a lot of funny shit to people over the years. Isaiah Thomas. Uh, we see how they did him so dirty. It's just, it's just very consistent with who they are. Their fan base is disgusting. And I hate to say it, sorry, Celtics fans, but y'all probably the more, one of the most toxic fan bases in the league. But I'm not talking about that. Yeah, he did a lot of things for the community. Shout out to Marcus Smart, bro. But he now with the Grizzlies, we gonna touch on that as well. Um, Chris Dawson is now there. This is now a big three. You got the two Jays. We know what they are, two way players. Um, now you got Chris Dawson who averaged 23 points last season on great efficiency. Right, he's seven foot three. He can shoot the three. He fits right into what they want to do. Shoot a lot of money for three. And now he can solely play the power four spot without thinking it, like without having to step out of his role. And that's scary. Right. right. He never really got that chance because because we know in New York, New York, once by the time he drafted, Stoudemire was down. He was nothing. He was already out the league by the time he got drafted. So he had to he was forced to play in between that. We know Mavs is the next team and we know what happened there. No bit Mavs, Dwight Powell. And then and then he go to Washington. What, Thomas Bryant for that one year and then no one else after that and then it's like now Robert Williams beside him and it's looking real good for him I think this team um this this team people saying people are saying that this is the team to beat in the in, in the whole NBA and definitely the team to be in the Eastern Conference we, we got to be real but with what the Boston Celtics have been doing over the past the, this past yeah. season especially this past season especially I gotta say uh, the coaching, the coaching staff yeah. was not good. They added new guys to the coaching staff. Um, I, I just think the whole thing with Joe Mazzula, I don't, I still not, I'm still not a believer. Are you believing that? I'm not a believer in that still. I, I don't know. 
the Joe Mazzula thing, I'm not sold. With this, with this roster, it would be hard not to like. And, and like we said, Joe is a decent coach. It's not like he's he's the worst. Like he's that like he's trash. Like yeah, I mean for what for the time he was given and for what he had to work with. Yeah, and we, we just don't think pretty good. Yeah. We just think with what they had, it's a downgrade basically. It's like it's like you walk around with a bat, you know, a batty, and come around with a. Eh, it's like that's basically what it is, you know. Come back around when you break up with her, you come back around with her. Eh. So it's like, I, but it, with this roster, I'm telling you, like, but like also like you said, with the Celtics having won a championship since '08. Oh man, and then one finals and all these conference finals, giving them the odds that us knowing what they really is. It's hard. It's hard. I, I I get where you coming from. You know, you you open, you just open my eye back up to that. Like, it it is really hard to give just to just give them that edge to be the team to beat when these guys seven with the Heat one year, seven the next year, lose in seven. It, it's just so much with the Celtics. You and Malcolm Brogdon, you got him. He's the sixth man of the year last year. You got Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Starting role now. Yeah, he, yeah. He, you have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Um, Two two guys who are very similar in terms of what their archetype is, but we know one guy's better than the other. Um, I think um, this this is the best team on paper, probably in, not in the league. Can't say that, but it's the best constructed team in terms of well balanced. Um, it's very well balanced. Wow, too. Like on um, paper, it's going to be hard. And I, the only team, of course, you know, this is something that's been repeated for the past couple seasons. The only team that that I think will be their competition is the Bucks. Other than that, no, 76 is no, I, unless they go get Damian Lillard or something. Um, I, oh, unless the Heat get Damian Lillard or something like that, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, I think the only team that will be their competition is the Bucks. I think it'll be hard for the Bucks to get over this team. Yeah. If this team really um, lives up to the hype that they're supposed to be, I think it'll be hard to be that Boston Celtics team for the Milwaukee Bucks. And I don't know what the Milwaukee Bucks, who they're going to get, but I don't think it's going to be um, a major free agent. I, I really don't. What's your perspective of the team? Do you think this is a super team? And the bench is still the same. They still got Derek White. Oh, man. Uh, uh, too well balanced. If I'm looking at it on paper, yes, but I gotta see how they play out. I, I, I generally gotta see how they play out because I can say, like, I didn't see that with Ben Simmons, you know, thinking they were gonna be a super team, and I seen how they played out. They weren't a super team. Um, there, there's been teams like that. Uh, the Lakers this past season, and the Lakers in 2021, and the Lakers in 2022, on paper. Well, not not the beginning of the Lakers. The Lakers after the trade deadline. I've seen a lot of names. They were a good team, not a super team though. Like all, you know, there's teams that have these names, and on paper it really looks like they're gonna be a super team. Like I said, 21 and 22 Lakers, Westbrook, LeBron, and AD. How can you not argue that as a super team? I mean, in terms of as constructed, because we know KD ain't played a single game before people was calling that a super team. He ain't played a single game with the uh, Warriors yet. I mean, as constructed, I mean, I don't know. But with that, <laughs> with that, it's like, come on, bro. Yeah, I know, but like it's this is I get it. It still it still matters. Okay, so yeah, um they just turned uh Marcus Small was probably out of like twelve points. They turned him into Chris Osprey. Yeah, that's so I know if, I, yes, I agree on paper they are, but Chris Stops, bro, he's a guy like I You don't know what to expect. Really. Yeah, I don't know fully what to I can't say that because I know I'm going to get 20 and 10 out of him when he's a second option. Yeah, I, can, I don't know what I'm expecting with him as a third option in a different system. Also, again, like I just told you, he's playing out of his element at this point. He's not hes not really the power forward center breed no more. He's fully going to be a power forward at this point. But when you think about it, Eli, Malcolm Brogdon is going to be the starting point guard, right? That's Jalen Brown, who's 6'8", right? 6'7"? He's 6'7". Six, around six seven yeah he's six seven. yeah that you got him at the two guards so he's already oversized and all the two guard almost all the two guards in the league you know him and clay thompson i think are the tallest shooting guards in the league and jalen brown is like i said six seven they go to jt who's six ten then you go to the power four the seven three at the power four then 
Rob Williams is 6'10", 6'11"? Yeah, 6'10". Yeah, like, that's a very big lineup. Then you still got Derek White and a lot of guys off the bench. Um, Peyton Pritchard, guys who can shoot the ball, who can play defense. It, it, it's very scary. Like, their defense is, is good. This is one of the best teams we've seen in a while on paper, um, especially through the starting five. Like, in the past couple of years, I, I'll say, yeah, like, the Nets was really good. We know that. T- it, like you said, the Nets were top heavy through the first three to four. And then when it was just James Harden and them, you know, until they traded him, that's when they, they got a little, they evened it out a little bit more. But when it was just James Harden and, and Kyrie and um, KD, it was really just, like you said, top heavy. At this point, this team is is really good from the starting point guard all the way to the, you know, the starting five to the next five off the bench. So at, as of right now, I will call them a super team. I got to see how this plays out through the first couple games of the season, you know, the first 20, 30 games of the season. I got to see 